Now guys, it's been a couple of months since I bought my new car and I've done just over 2,000 miles. Now, after these 2,000 miles, would I have changed any specification? Am I loving it? And also, I answer your burning questions as well right at the very end. Now guys, if you are considering purchasing an A-Class, I have actually covered the differences between the facelift and the previous car. So if you want to check that out, I'll link that at the end of the video. But first, how did I get on with 2,000 miles? Now I've been loving my new car, I've been all over the place, from long drives up to the Midlands, lots of smaller drives locally, and I've definitely learnt a few things. But I wanted to briefly touch on the gadgets. Which brings me very neatly onto spec or specification. Now I will add that the level of specification found on the base model of an A-Class these days is quite literally insane. I was even debating just going for the base model because um, the level of specification on that car is... Well, it's quite incredible these days. So you've got things like Keyless Go, also known as Keyless Entry, or full screen multimedia systems, including CarPlay, reversing camera, parking sensors, ambient lighting, heated seats, wireless charging, and like there's so many things are standard. So that is what's known as the executive package. Now, I don't tend to go through the packages in too much detail on my channel, just because it will vary from country to country. And um, of course it can vary over time as well. Uh, but this one is the premium package. So. I'll touch on more on that in a minute, but I just wanted to say that I could have quite literally just gone for a standard spec car and um, been quite happy because, uh, yeah, you, you get all of this. <laughs> it's quite incredible. Uh, which brings me very neatly on to the second thing I love, and that is the ambient lighting of the car. Now, I'm a sucker for ambient lighting. Some models in Mercedes I reviewed, it is very bright <laughs> this is a bit more subtle it's kind of just in the vents here i've got it on a, a kind of red and blue color at the moment but very easy to change on the screen here you can just swipe across go into comfort and then choose your color i've got it on multi-color at the moment just because it's uh, one of my favorites uh, but yeah you can go on monochrome and have one color you can see all the blue up here then a bit more prominent which uh, i know a lot of people use but uh, i like to change it up a bit <laughs> put a bit of red in there but um yes Ambient lighting, absolutely love it. Now next is wireless CarPlay. Now yes, wireless CarPlay has finally made it to the A-Class, which I did cover and mention it in my facelift kind of video again, which I'll link at the, uh, at the end. But wireless CarPlay is such a convenient factor, which is amazing. Now don't worry if you have bought a Mercedes that um, uh, doesn't have wireless CarPlay, uh, so you have the wired connection, you have to plug it into a port in here. Don't worry, I have made a video on how you can convert it to wireless. That link will be on the pop-up banner up above, and if that's not working, there'll be a link in the description down below. Now next up I wanted to talk about the mild hybrid technology and unless you own one of these cars you literally won't really experience how this is so I kind of wanted to show you on camera how clever this mild hybrid stuff is. To clarify this is not a plug-in hybrid, plug-in hybrids uh, the clue is in the name where you have to actually plug it in uh, but mild hybrids you don't need to do anything it just does stuff but I wanted to explain a little bit more about it in this video. And to demonstrate that, we need to head out on the road. So let's just get up to speed and we'll show you what happens on the instrument cluster. Now, one important thing to note is that you won't see much of mild hybrid stuff when you're in comfort. So I'm in comfort mode at the moment. Uh, comfort is one of the Mercedes drive modes. You've got like, in most of them, eco, comfort, sport modes, and sometimes sport plus, and race if you have an AMG. Luckily, lucky you if you have one of those. Uh, but if you're in comfort mode, you won't actually notice much going on. The trick here is when you go to eco mode. So if I take my foot off the accelerator pedal here, you won't really see much going on. You're just slowing down. Well, I'm kind of going down a bit of a hill at the moment. But look what happens when I go into eco mode. So I'm going to select eco and say we're accelerating here. And then I take my foot off the accelerator pedal. Watch the revs. It literally just drops down to zero. So the engine has literally just gone off. Now, as soon as I put my foot on the brake pedal, so I need to slow up, it's 30 here, it will come back on again. So the engine literally turns on and off as you're driving around to save on fuel. Now, you have to bear in mind, this is like a more advanced version of start-stop technology, because I know that when start-stop first came out, uh, some people weren't a huge fan because, well, it, it you know, you're trying to pull away from a roundabout or something and then you have to wait for the engine to come on. This is almost near instantaneous, so it's very, very clever. So here again, coming to the roundabout, it comes to a complete stop. As soon as I go to pull away, it just comes back on again. So it's super quick at how it can 
turn the engine on that fast. So it's some very, very clever tech of how a mild hybrid works. Now, the other thing as well, which is very clever, is that it does the opposite thing. Pop it in sport mode and it will give you even more power. And you do notice mild hybrid as well, compared to driving the previous engine, it gives you that kind of boost. It used to be called EQ Boost, but I think Mercedes just kind of simplified it and just called it mild hybrid now. But um, yeah, literally we're at national speed limit now. So if I change this to sport mode, uh, you'll now notice that, uh, of course, not only will the car drop down, but You'll see on the left there it gives you a little bit extra power to fill in the gaps of turbo lag so it does not take you long to get up to you know the speed limit for the road so it's very clever how mild hybrid works literally can help save fuel but also give you a bit of a boost when you need it the most you won't notice it that much if you drive in comfort though so make sure that if you do buy a car that has mild hybrid tech in it make sure you use those drive modes because it makes a whole world of difference so guys, what are the main reasons for me going for the premium package? So mainly there's one, one particular thing on the premium package, which I'm a bit of a sucker for, which I'll show in a minute. Uh, but one of the things on the premium package in Mercedes, and obviously correct at the time of when this car was made, was a thing called augmented reality. Now that's a very clever camera system at the very top of the windscreen, that looks a bit like this, and kind of superimposes blue arrows on the screen, telling you exactly where to go, which is super useful. Uh, although I don't use it personally too much myself, um, I did want to make a specific video on it with dash cam. There is a thing on the Mercedes Me store where you can upgrade and buy the dash cam capability. Now, um, I have made a video on this before, but I wanted to test it on the new multimedia system which this car has. So uh, be sure to be subscribed if you want to see me to cover that. Uh, the other thing is uh, blind spot assist. This is on the uh, kind of mirrors. You have like a triangle here and it'll go red if someone's in your blind spot, which is quite useful. I didn't really need that, but it is very useful to have and um, yeah, very useful on the motorway. The main thing why I bought the premium package is because of the upgraded speaker system. Now it's not a branded speaker system, it's a Mercedes-Benz speaker system, but it does have a small amplifier and a subwoofer in the back, which, um, well, I'm a bit of a sucker for a good sound system because, uh, yeah, <laughs> I do like my music. Um, I didn't go for Premium Plus purely because of a couple of reasons. Uh, I'm gonna try and remember what was on that one. I think it was the sunroof and then the multi-beam LED adaptive headlights. This does have adaptive headlights, but it's just not the fancy multi-beam LED. I don't really do that kind of much driving in the dead of night, so I don't really need the multi-beam LED, so I didn't choose to opt for that one. Um, and then the sunroof, I have had a car with a sunroof before. They are super nice. However, I tried to have the sunroof open as much as possible, but I just found it noisy and things like that. And obviously, if you're in a car, loads of air flowing, that's kind of what they are. So I typically have the sunroof closed a lot. So that is uh, one of the main reasons why I didn't go for Premium Plus. I went for Premium instead. Now guys, I have found that uh, from owning uh, my air class for you know, the past couple of months and obviously doing 2000 miles, um, I have actually found this is my driving position right here. So. When I always review a car, I always, always put the seat into my driving position, but I've actually found a preference with actually having it further back. Now, yes, I could actually put it further forward. Of course I could and um, still drive, no problem. But this is where I have found, and obviously you have to factor in a bit of context, I do have really long legs. So this is where it is at the moment. The only thing I wanted to mention uh, was because this is my car and I've taken a few things to the rubbish tip and things like that, uh, you know, that's what we all do with our cars. Um, I have found this. So if you fold the seats down, you do have this slight issue. Now, I mean, it's a first world problem. So um, all you can do is just move that seat forward and then it will fold down and then move it back. But it is just something I picked up and something that I hadn't picked up on the review from having the car for the day and reviewing it before. But obviously from having it for this bit of time, I found you have to move that forward. Now, I guess one workaround is you could go for Premium Plus, which would then also, which I forgot to mention, gives you the electric seats. Press a button, seat goes forward, fold the seat down, press a button, it will go back, nice and easy. Or you could, of course, look at some other models in Mercedes. So there's things like uh, GLAs, they have a bit more uh, height, CLAs and C-classes and that sort of thing. So if you are purely after um, prioritizing legroom and things like that for the rear passengers of course there are larger models in the mercedes-benz range as well but yes that's just one thing i picked up and thought i'd share it with everyone because it's something i hadn't picked up before 
Now guys, for this final section today, I thought I'd do something slightly different here and cover your questions answered. So a few days ago on the YouTube community tab, I put out a post saying I'm just gonna be filming this video today and ask me any questions about the car and I will answer them for you on here. Apologies about the dog um, over there. He's having a whale of a time on his uh, morning walk, but uh, yeah, I'm sure he'll go in a minute. Right, your questions. So. Oh, and apologies in advance. If I pronounce anyone's name wrong on here, I do apologise. So, uh, first one, Jared Van Hoof 5854. Is the lack of touchpad on the new model as much of a hardship as it seems? That is an excellent question, because that's come up loads on um, YouTube before when I've covered uh, Mercedes. So, is it uh, much of a hardship? Uh, no, not at all. I mean, I obviously bought the car uh, without a touchpad. So um, for those of you who don't know, basically when Mercedes brought out the facelift with this new multimedia system, uh, they removed the touchpad that was in the middle. The touchpad was used to swipe left and right and control the screen. There was a next track button, the back button and the home button. And now it's just this kind of storage area in the middle. Um, so yeah, I mean, when I first picked up the car, I, I definitely did go to use the touchpad a couple of times. Uh, I won't lie. <laughs> Obviously there's nothing there now. Um, but no, you just use the touchscreen, um, all the touch controls on the steering wheel. So it's not that much of an issue. Um, yeah, I went to use it a couple of times, but you kind of got used to it. I know a lot of people um, I've read in the comments of like, how did they get rid of the touchpad and things like that? But no, you kind of get used to it after a while. So I don't think it's that much of an issue. Uh, next one is from Norman Boys4983. Could you show the actual dash cam camera lens in close up? I think I have one, but it's not appearing in the app as a purchase. Yes, absolutely. It looks like this here, and it's not the top part, it's the bottom part, this bit here. So look really closely, have a look, see if there's a lens there, and that uh, is the augmented reality. So you probably would know if you have it, because if you use the sat nav, you get the kind of camera feed come up and then the blue arrows come up over the top of it. It's not available everywhere around the world. So obviously either double check with local Mercedes or have a look, see if in settings it says the words augmented reality. I would actually like to cover dash cam in the future, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel and I will cover that. I have covered it before, but that was on the previous multimedia system. So I want to check it out and see what it's like on the new one and also see what it's like at nighttime as well, which I didn't think of when filming the previous video. So yeah. Right, let's have a look who's next. Uh, this one is from D3 Genator. Uh, I assume your steering wheel has capacitive buttons. Can you talk about its ease of use compared to physical buttons? Yes. So it's a common trend manufacturers now where they're kind of um, introducing these capacitive buttons. So if you guys don't know what capacitive buttons are, instead of having physical buttons, you swipe and press in a flat surface and depending on when you press is the action it will take. It's a bit like my steering wheel in my car like this. I personally would prefer physical buttons just because when you're driving, you can feel where the button is and press the button that you need to actually like press. Um, having said that though, I do love the style and the design of the steering wheel in this car. I think it's one of Mercedes-Benz's best. I just would prefer actual physical buttons, but again, it didn't put me off buying the car. You kind of get used to it again after a while. It's just probably a bit like, um, I guess, mobile phones years ago. I, I do remember when I had a, um, a buttoned phone, so to speak, and they brought out, of course, iPhone that everyone has these days, or a touchscreen. And I was like, I don't want to get fingerprints on there, but actually you kind of just get used to it. And I know it's a bit different with driving, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to look down too much, but you do get used to it after a while. So I don't think it's that much of, a, of an issue. Um, let's see, next one is from mm-xf9jj. What are the most useful features of the car when driving day to day? Oh, most useful features. Well, I do turn on CarPlay every every time I jump in, so that's definitely a useful feature. Um, either wired or wireless, depending on if I'm going a long journey or, or something like that. Um, other useful features? Keyless, uh, so keyless entry. I didn't have that on my uh, Vauxhall Astro before. <laughs> I didn't have many things on that one compared to uh, this new car. So when you have your key and you um, you walk up to the car, hand behind the handle and it just automatically unlocks. So keyless go is really, really useful. So I definitely recommend that. You can switch it off as well, just in case, um, just in case you 
have your front door right next to your drive or something. Um, yeah, I'd probably say those two are quite useful. Blind Spot Assist is quite good as well. Um, I personally wouldn't have selected that, but it was on a package and it's actually really, really useful for motorways and that sort of thing, you know, when someone's in your blind spot. So uh, that's pretty good. Uh, right, and guys, so last question of the video. Uh, this one is Brendan Hill 5802. What was the reason for choosing an A class? Uh, well, I mean, I've covered Mercedes a lot on my channel, so familiarity is definitely one of them. I know them quite well, uh, and of course the facelift A-Class came out and it has the uh, larger screens, lots of gadgets now compared to previously, so a bit of that. A uh, budget, of course, was um, a huge factor. I would have loved to have gone for an A35 or a plug-in hybrid. Um, I was even eyeing up other, other cars of manufacturers as well, but... I kind of just went with A-Class Hatchback because I've had one before and it had lots of gadgets on it and I don't know, it was in Mercedes Benz Pool showroom and I, I just really liked the look of it. So <laughs> I just kind of, very spontaneous purchase. And of course going through this premium package um, to film some content for you guys as well. So uh, yeah, familiarity, budget. I, I said I would have loved to have gone for a, um, another car, but. I have just bought a house, so I kind of was restricted. I didn't want to go too overboard. So maybe in the future I might go for something a bit different, but it's a lovely car. I've had them before, and um, yeah, they're super luxurious. Ambient lighting all on the inside, so they're really, really nice. So yeah, a few reasons why um, I just really like the A-Class. Uh, cool, guys. So that concludes all the questions. Uh, now, if I didn't get to answer your question, Ask me in the comment section right below this video and I'll reply back to you as soon as I can. But guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, see you soon.